Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Danny here, and today I'm bringing you guys a little bit of a gameplay commentary. Today, we're just going to be going over, once again, some HOG 2.6. I think I'm just going to be playing a ton of HOG 2.6. I can't, I don't know, maybe I'll, in the future, I'll branch out to other decks, but I think, for me as a free-to-play player, um, HOG 2.6 really is my go-to deck. Now, in this episode, you're going to be seeing a ton of giant slash royal giant gameplay, and uh, basically how I counter them. Um... They're actually not too bad to counter, uh, you just have to very, you have to understand when to apply pressure and when not to, so. In the first matchup here, we're up against the Giant, and, uh, you know, there was a Skarmie right there to send in my Hog, as, you know, I was hoping that if I throw down the Hog early on, perhaps then I'd be able to prevent the Giant from coming down in front of the Witch, so. Uh, that was the idea, and uh, he counters it really well with the Skeleton Army, and luckily for us, he expended an extra 3 elixir to a miner that really didn't amount to too much. Got some chip damage off, but it wasn't too bad. Um, I think because I held on to the log like last second, maybe he thought he could use the miner to tank for the Skeleton Army. Uh, now, looking back in hindsight, I probably could have sacrificed the tower damage to take out the miner a little quicker. So, you know, uh, just something to think about in the future. Now for that push, uh, using the Musketeer to counter push, sending the Hog and Ice Golem, and um, you know I decided to fireball the minions and the bomber uh, because I didn't want to counter push going. Uh, yeah, so sorry if uh, my play by play is a little slow, but uh, sometimes it's gonna catch up with my words, you know. So right here, since the miner in, and uh, you know we, I'm, I tried my best to defend the cannon, and I throw in a Hog Rider here, knowing the aggression would basically. Uh, he would have to stop applying more uh, aggro, and so I threw in a hog rider. As you can see, he didn't have very many counters, allowing our hog rider to deal massive damage. And then right there, um, luckily for us, we were able to use an ice golem to buy some time for the musketeer and the cannon to really burn down the giants. And then using the skeletons to pull the minions back. And then uh, what's it called? Using the musketeer to clean up the rest of the troops. So it was really a good trade for us. And once again, he throws down the giant in the back. And uh, now that we're heading into the double elixir, I think it's time to realize that we have to begin to really cycle and turtle down on our defenses. And so, right here, I was like, okay, let's throw an early musketeer, let's throw the cannon. Normally, I don't, I advise against the early cannon because you're burning against time. But, uh, you yeah. know, in this respect, I wanted to cycle early on and therefore get the cannon back out in time. Right here, he sends in the miner. I thought he was going to go after my musketeer. And, uh, you know, so therefore I placed the preemptive skeletons. But,. Ended up giving him some good zap value, and then he actually gets some pretty solid minor damage. Now, once again, he starts building another giant push, so we once again build up our defenses, um, quickly trying to cycle out. Now, right there, I probably think we probably would have been better off um, waiting on a little bit before fireballing that giant and um, what's it called, bomber. However, um, it didn't work pan out too poorly as. I managed to actually uh, kill off the witch as well. He places minions preemptively probably to prevent against my hog rider. I use the hog rider to hopefully kite the units back and get some log value as well. So now I don't basically have to, don't have to deal with the minions on the other side. Place down the preemptive cannon. Once again, he stacks his troops at the bridge, so I think that is very easy fireball value. Throws down the ice golem to prevent the witch from any further damage, to prevent him from also damaging the cannon as well. So let's throw down the musketeers to take out the miner. And then from there, we even out again. Throw down the hog because I knew that he really doesn't have very many counters left, and so you know we were able to throw down a log and uh, what's it called, hog rider, knowing that he couldn't really defend. So at this point, I was thinking to myself, okay, well I really have to go in here because I think I don't, I can't really survive another giant push, and so I decided to pretty much go all in here, and it actually ends up paying off as he really had nothing left. Um, I was taking a gamble uh, on the miner. Um, but knowing that it's luckily it's only level 11, so I was able to stop it with just some skeletons. And since he didn't have a big spell, we were able to get away with the dub. So that, I mean, Giant Miner is becomes very difficult when he sends in the Miner to take out your Musketeer. And so you have to really try to protect it to the best of your abilities with both your skeletons, your Ice Spirit, and your Ice Golem. And, um, you know, keep the Musketeer alive because she is essentially the bulk of your DPS. Now, for whatever reason, the audio decides to cut out here. I don't know why. Uh, every single time it hits the second game, gameplay that is recording for whatever reason it just disappears so start off the game i see that uh you know he's got the night witch going ice wizard so excuse me uh, i was actually thinking about tombstone but uh Luckily, did not have that. Uh, Ice Ice Wizard uh, Tornado Combo is actually already pretty solid. And he actually has Skarmie as well, uh, which I'll come to figure out later on. And so, 
right here, I decide to just play defense for a little bit, send in the naked hog. Unfortunately, he gets the tornado to king tower, and so he throws down the skarmy here, which is perfect for my log, as I'm able to get decent log value, and on top of that, getting some solid damage. So we were pretty much knocked down to his tower to about half, and um, at this point, you know, I was thinking to myself, okay, well, he has the Electro Wizard that I could potentially Fireball as well, since my Fireball is level 12, so that is very good for us. And then um, I decided to play a little bit slow here, uh, just throwing a Hog Rider here to continue to apply aggression. I guess I don't play it slow, but he does a really good job with the Tornado Ice Wizard combo to really counter push, or not to counter, to counter our push. And uh, that was the end of that push. Luckily for us, he didn't really have a push going, so he couldn't really place a giant in front of that Ice Wizard. I decided to log it away just to get some more chip damage, as well as the fact that, you know, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to throw down the counter. So once again, this was a really poor Ice Golem on my part, I feel like. I think I threw the cannon. I threw the Musketeer late, right next to the, to the right side of the tower, making sure that he couldn't get poison value. And then after that, we throw the skeletons out of the poison range, the Ice Spirit out of the poison range, and then threw down the Ice Golem to prevent the bats from incurring further damage. And just like that, we have a little bit of a mini counter push going. Now, right here, I was just waiting for my Elixir to get to max before making the next play. And luckily for us, he was actually throwing, he threw his uh, Skeleton Army to the other lane. And uh, just like that, we were able to get one hit now if he had placed his electro wizard on top of our hog or a little bit closer i think he might have been able to prevent us from uh getting that one hit but we due to his mistake we were actually able to play it out quite well so once again spacing out all my defenses uh, my musketeer and cannon so that way poison could not get all of them uh using the skeletons to prevent the electro wizard from incurring further damage on our musketeer uh right here i threw the login i think it was a little bit of preemptively uh excuse me Again, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately for us, he ex ends up getting a solid Skarmy. It was a really poor Ice Spirit on my part. I probably should have placed that a little bit further, and then poor Skeletons again. So he got a ton of value here. His his Skarmy taken out our one Elixir Skeletons. My Ice Spirit not hopping onto the things that I wanted it to hop on. Luckily for us, Fireball clears everything out, and he overextends with this Naked Electro Wizard. So we were able to take it out for a trade for. 2 for 4 trade, and right here I'm able to go in with a Hog Rider. He's going to Tornado again, and basically what I'm doing here is making him exhaust more Elixir on the just trying to uh, defend, and then from here he puts in one final Giant Push, and I felt like in this case and scenario, I think he was actually, like this is this was the push, you know, this was the push to make the big plays, and right here um, I basically threw in a Hog Rider to prevent any further uh, troops from being piled on, and so Luckily, we were to get some pressure off. I believe the Hog Rider was actually able to get a hit. If not, the Log was able to give us another uh, defense. He does throw in the Electro Wizard. And uh, unfortunately, that just wasn't enough to stop us. I personally think that if maybe if he threw Skeleton Army and uh, Electro Wizard, he would have prevented us from getting that one hit and then uh, possibly incurring the win. However, I think he, he just panicked a little bit and didn't know what to play because maybe he was afraid of the Log or whatever. Um, but either way... Um, I think he might have been able to stop it. He might have given us fireball value. However, I think he would have been able to stop the hog rider. And so that would have been quite good for him. Now, moving on to this next match, uh, we're going to be playing against the Royal Giant Lightning deck and uh, with Tombstone. And so, you know, Tombstone Ice Wizard is always a tough combo, as well as I believe he has Tornado. That trifecta of defense basically allows um, all of his units to basically be ready to incur a counter push. You know, Hog is never going to get by, nor is he ever going to get punished simply of how cheap his deck generally is and so right here he starts off royal gianting and uh, we were able to defend off quite well spacing out our units once again i didn't know if he had fireball or if he had lightning and obviously right there he shows it i think right here he does overcommit a little bit and uh, we were able to get one extra hit now right here as you can see we're down about one elixir but in my opinion i think that was a super worthy trade as what you have to realize is the Ice Wizard, or the Ice Wizard, the Ice Spirit not only jumped onto the tower incurring damage, it also gave us one extra Hog Rider hit. So I believe that amounts to almost like 400 extra damage. And so that is definitely worth one Elixir in my opinion. So once again, he throws down the uh, Ice Wizard in the back. I was leaking Elixir, so I decided to Fireball it just to get some extra chip damage. And then using, once again, a low cannon as well as Musketeer uh, spaced out so that way he couldn't get Lightning Value using the Ice Spirit to make sure that... Um, What's it called? Royal Giant dies, and then uh, 
Unfortunately for me, I didn't throw down the Ice Golem in time to take the damage of the Baby Dragon. However, um, that was okay. Our Musketeer was able to pop off basically two extra shots onto the tower, incurring about what is it, almost 400 points of damage. Uh, so that was really solid for us. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have tossed a Hog Rider to kite the Barbarian back, and then uh, pre-logging the Tombstone. But in this case scenario, I decided to play a little bit safe and just use a Skeleton. Um, so just something to keep in mind and so once again I fireball away just to get some more chip damage and uh, you know I, at this point I was thinking to myself okay well what can I do here right I decided to throw a hog in right throw in the hog and then uh, basically force him to exhaust elixir to defend using the tornado early on which means he couldn't uh, defend or drag it to the king's tower and then luckily right here um, I was able to get my Ice Golem down in time, preventing the Baby Dragon from incurring further damage. If he had Baby Dragon had locked on, it would have been a massive amount of damage. I think I would have been down to like 16, 1400, 1300 even. Um, and so it really was a dangerous play from, uh, what's it called? Uh, me there or it was, it was a it was a lucky play I guess I should say so right here once again he's got lightning and I placed a far cannon and uh, right here I wanted to defend against uh, this push so I decided to throw in skeletons for the extra DPS making sure that he had basically couldn't lightning uh, my cannon and my musketeer uh, once again he throws down tombstone to defend had to throw the hog rider in the log to prevent it from any prevent further damage from incurring getting more fireball value making sure that the baby dragon was low on health Dropping the Ice Golem to make sure that we don't incur any more chip damage. And then from there, we cycle around to our Hog once again. And at this point, I realized that he couldn't really defend simply because, you know, he had just used Tornado. And then, you know, he would have to cycle all the way back around to Tombstone in which he wouldn't be able to get optimal placement. And then if I Fireball away, all I need is one hit to claim the W. Um, so very lucky for us in that last part, we were able to outcycle uh, both of his defenses and... Uh, basically beat him at the elixir game so very fortunate for us uh we were never really giving him the chance to set up a very solid lightning uh scenario and uh you know maintained our elixir advantage to make sure that lightning wasn't able to come out so in this next matchup he's gonna have both oh look at that text but uh He's going to have the matchup in the case that he does have Barbarians and he does have Mini Pekka. So that is two very hard counters to the Hog Rider. And so in this case, we just decided to start off cycling Skeletons, throwing Ice Golem and Hog Riders. Because I was thinking, okay, if he has Tornado, then he can't really Tornado that. So he throws down the Mini Pekka in the beginning. A little bit of a faulty misplay on my part. Personally, I think I should have waited a tad bit longer for the Fireball for the, must, the what's it called, Mini Pekka to run into it and therefore incur the damage. Other than I would have only had to spend maybe uh, a nice spirit to take care of it and so right here I was checking if it was still recording so using a, a ice spirit and skeletons to counter the mini P.E.K.K.A we were a okay um, I didn't want to exhaust the musketeer because I didn't know what his win condition was and I wanted to hide DPS just to be ready to defend right here we log it all back just to make sure the royal giant it doesn't get a hit on our tower and then also incurring damage on the musketeer now right here i realized that okay wait we have a pretty solid push going on so i thought about you know maybe throwing a hog right here but then i realized that i think that would be a little bit of an overcommitment. so i decided to just sit back and play defense because i had, for some sort of reason i had a feeling he had a knight and uh i guessed it right luckily right here we kite the knight backwards and the knight was basically taken care of giving us one hit as well as forcing out the mini pekka early on once again we use a different combination this time uh, of skeletons and then ice spirit simply because um, I was afraid that perhaps the ice spirit might die to the uh, two archers in the back um, and uh, I just decided to throw uh, skeletons instead now right here uh, we decide to once again space out our units always space out your units against royal giant because you never know what he has if he has lightning obviously you know if you place your musketeer and uh, what's it called cannon on the side you know he's just it's gonna get eaten alive you know so just something to keep in mind um, and also make sure that you know keep in mind that ice golem could be something that you could use as a lightning rod uh, so right there I decided to go on a hog rider just to support the musketeer and then luckily for us she was able to take out two of the barbarians we do miss the knight over there unfortunately but we do hit the two archers in the back and right here I was thinking to myself okay this is fireball valley right here he's gonna clump all of his troops we do end up killing pretty much everything that he has he does do a good set of arrows so at this point I realized that he's used all of his cards he doesn't have any big spells which means my musketeer could go 
straight next to my tower without really being punished. Um, so once again, right here, I decided to set up for Hard Rider Counter Push, it's knowing that um, you know I, I just need to get some sort of chip damage. We do get one hit, and we do hit the Mini P.E.K.K.A. And so right here, we got a half health Mini P.E.K.K.A. as well as the Knight Musketeer. Luckily, still cleans up everything for us. And uh, we cycle back to our Musketeer Cannon, making sure that he really can't break through. So using the Skeletons as extra DPS, World Giant doesn't get a hit. And once again, we cycle back to our Hog Rider, Ice Spirit. And basically we go in the Fireball over here because this is massive Fireball value. Like he just gave it all to us, you know. So right here we log it all away just to kill everything and hopefully incur some Musketeer damage. Look, un luckily for us actually, he actually threw down Knight to expend three extra elixir that he couldn't really do. Personally, I don't agree with his mini P.E.K.K.A. over here. I think he should have just played uh, perhaps a Royal Giant in the back or something. And then, uh, you know, counter using mini P.E.K.K.A. But right here, I think he wanted to get cheeky and get a double lane push going, thinking that maybe I didn't have enough elixir. But at this point, I think the, the victory is pretty obvious. Uh, I, just, I just pretty much cycle around to my next Fireball. Or Log, or actually Fireball, because Fireball comes first. And we were able to incur the victory. So... All in all, I mean, this matchup was pretty much in our control simply because his counters were pretty high uh, cost, elixir-wise. And so, you know, that was just something to keep in mind. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.